Yo, what is up guys? Dale Boy here, aka Blue Collar Sports TV. Hopefully you guys are doing well. If you're new here, smash that like, hit subscribe, all of that good stuff. So, Tyson Fury successfully defends his WBC, Ring Magazine and Lineal Heavyweight titles by knocking out Dillian White brutally in the sixth round of their fight. And quite frankly, this was a walk in the park for Tyson Fury. It was a fight in which Tyson Fury dictated from start to finish. Never let White have any opportunities in this fight to build a foothold or gain any momentum whatsoever. Um, first round, uh, Tyson Fury boxing behind that jab, keeping range against Dillian White. Uh, rather strangely, Dillian White came out southpaw in the first round, uh, which wasn't effective. The jab wasn't getting to the target, and his straight left hand was extremely slow and ponderous and he was reaching with that shot and getting caught with jabs it was immediately apparent early on that dillian white was having a big he was having a big problem in regards to gauging his distance and when to throw shots so he was swinging and throwing but he was out of range and then he would fall in either into a clinch or just walk into a jab um so fury got his distance and timing down right away and yeah, it looked like he had White's number uh, from the opening bell. Uh, round two, Dillian White went back to orthodox, uh, trying to box from that stance, which he did for, uh, throughout the rest of the fight. And ultimately, Dillian White was looking for one Hail Mary punch, uh, in particular with the left hook and the overhand right. When he was jabbing, Dillian, uh, when Dillian White was jabbing, uh, Tyson Fury being the taller and longer man, he was countering Dillian White's jab over the top, with his straight right hand and you know Dillian White's jab was slow it was ponderous easy to see coming and Tyson Fury would counter that shot very effectively with his straight right hand and you know the early rounds would, would honestly was just Tyson Fury playing it relatively safe keeping distance and completely outboxing Dillian White just completely outboxing him uh, Dillian White he tried to get dirty in the clinch he tried to make it a rough and tumble affair by by throwing rabbit shots to the back of the head of Tyson Fury, but even that wasn't even that wasn't effective. Um, honestly, you know, Dillian White landed a couple of hooks to the body, a couple of cuffing hooks to the head, but he literally landed nothing in this fight of any consequence. There was nothing where you thought, "Shit, that's a good shot from Dillian White." Not that I can uh, remember anyway. Um, and yeah, Tyson Fury was systematically outboxing Dillian White. Uh, then he started to neutralize Dillian White in the clinch. So at this point, Dillian White really had nothing. And, you know, right from like round three, round four, it was apparent that Dillian White was starting to tire already. Uh, he was starting to gas, uh, you know, fighting the heavier, taller man in the clinch, uh, gassed out Dillian White. White was swinging and missing badly, which also gassed out Dillian White. And yeah, round three, four onwards, you could tell that White's gas tank was starting to deplete. Round six was where the fight ended, and, um, you know, Dillian White walked into a picture-perfect uppercut from Tyson Fury, right uppercut, and it was quite simple. Uh, Dillian White was plodding along as he does, uh, coming in a straight line, no head movement. Uh, Tyson Fury landed a quick blinding jab, uh, not a hard jab, just a jab to distract Dillian White to occupy his hands, and Tyson Fury followed it up with a picture-perfect, super-quick uppercut, which rocked the head back of Dillian White. Uh, he hit the deck hard. He, he, he did beat the count, but he was on unsteady legs and the referee waved it off, and rightly so. This was an easy fight for Tyson Fury. Let's not, let's not make no mistake about it. Um, Christian Hammer gave Tyson Fury a better fight. Otto Arlene gave Tyson Fury a tougher fight. Um, you know, if easy for Tyson Fury, walk into the park. I'll tell you what this fight reminded me of. Um, it reminded me of Vladimir Klitschko when he was fighting overmatched mandatories. You know, just box him up for a few rounds and knock him out. And even the knockout was reminiscent of um, Klitschko versus Pulev when Klitschko caught him with that big shot and pushed him off. That's exactly what Tyson Fury did. Um, this was a Klitschko-esque performance from Tyson Fury. Uh, literally gave Dillian White no openings, uh, Dillian had no success, and he got knocked VF out. And all three times Dillian White has been knocked out now, it's been by a right uppercut, of course, against Joshua, 
Povetkin and now Tyson Fury. Dillian White is more susceptible to an uppercut than I am a brunette with a big ass. you know? Uh, I mean, it's crazy. It's crazy getting knocked out by the same shot three times in your career. Absolutely insane. But, you know, this was an easy fight for Tyson Fury. Good performance. Boxed well behind his jab. Uh, I thought he looked a lot better in this fight than he did in the third Wilder fight in terms of conditioning. Uh, I felt his reactions looked better. His hand-eye coordination looked better. And yeah, this was a really good display uh, by Tyson Fury. I can't say no more than that. Um, Tyson Fury, where does he go from here? I mean, he's saying he's going to retire and fight for, uh, Francis Ngannou in a crossover fight, like a hybrid fight, whatever. Um, listen, I don't believe that Tyson Fury is going to retire. There is still so much money on the table. Obviously, the Usyk Joshua winner. I mean, we still need to see that fight. As good as, good as Tyson Fury is... He needs to take that fight. You know, we need to see Tyson Fury in the undisputed clash. Um, but after that, if he wins that fight, then yeah, cool. Um, sail off into the sunset. But he's still got some work to do, Tyson Fury. But the way he performed against uh, Dillian White, he's going to be a hard man to beat. He is going to be a hard man to beat. And one thing that kind of annoyed me about this, this Fury versus White fight, I go back and look at Fury's career. Imagine he never had that hiatus. Imagine what this guy could have achieved. I mean, this guy's missed out long periods of his career. And he's achieved what he has achieved. Imagine if, if he was, you know, fighting all the time. That, uh, who knows? Who knows where Tyson Fury would be right now. But the reality is, he is the WBC heavyweight champion. Uh, Ring Magazine heavyweight champion. And Lineal heavyweight champion. So, Tyson Fury right now is doing bits. 94,000 at Wembley, uh, great uppercut knockout, what's not to like. As for Dillian White, I'm going to be a bit harsh here. I, I felt his performance was was poor, disappointing, and quite frankly pathetic after all we've heard in the last three years surrounding Dillian White. Um, the whole, you know, the thousand day propaganda, all of that bullshit, that whole narrative, that, that's, that web of lies which a lot of channels pushed. You guys look kind of stupid right now. You've been pushing that BS for years, and, and this is what you got in return? I mean, sucks to be you, I guess. I mean, 20%? Well, based on that performance, uh, Dillian was lucky to get 20%, quite frankly. Uh, poor performance by Dillian White. Slow, ponderous, no adjustments, no nothing. I mean, it is what it is, man. It is what it is. Uh, but Tyson Fury done his job. He destroyed Dillian White. Where does Dillian White go from here? I mean, listen, there's that third Chizora fight, maybe. If Joshua loses to Usyk, he could fight Joshua again. But Dillian White, I mean, he's not going to beat any top, top heavyweight like, like Fury, like Usyk. He's not going to beat Joshua in a rematch. So maybe, maybe Dillian can hang around for another payday or two, but he's basically done at the elite level, in my opinion. Anyway, share your thoughts below. Beanie Guy Delboy, peace.